the Albanese government misled us last week, or maybe I should say lied, when it tried to explain the most stupid and incomprehensible decision it has made yet. I mean, this is so boneheaded and we need answers. The government decided last September to scrap all 45 of its Taipan helicopters after one crashed in July, killing four servicemen on board. In fact, it said it's going to strip them for parts and then bury them, literally bury them underground. And it's refusing to instead give them to Ukraine, which says it badly wants them to save injured soldiers from the battlefield in its war against Russian invaders. Now, nothing about this decision makes sense. One, the government says, oh, the helicopters are too unsafe. Well, the Ukrainians disagree. Other air forces disagree. We don't even know what caused that crash last year. And second, and here comes the deceit, the government says, well, you know, the Ukrainians asked for these choppers far too late, asked for them in November. That request came in uh, just before Christmas and um, our response is going through the normal uh, process of being developed by the Department of Defence. Uh, I would make the point, again, that that request came in three months after the disposal strategy began, uh, three months after these aircraft were grounded, three months after uh, maintenance ceased on these aircraft. The aircraft aren't in flying condition. In fact, it was in the first week of October that Liberal Senator David Fawcett, himself a former test pilot and army officer, met a Ukrainian delegation at a security conference in Denmark. They told him they wanted these Taipans. Fawcett passed on the request and on October 11, the Office of Defence Minister Richard Miles said they'd received it. That is a full month earlier than what you just heard from Pat Conroy, Minister for Defence Industries. Now, Senator Fawcett won't be interviewed. He's just trying to work with the government in, in the hope that it's not still too late to give Ukraine at least a dozen of the Taipans. He's not going to bag it publicly yet. But joining me is the man who broke this story, Kim Bergman. He's the editor of the Asia-Pacific Defence Reporter. He also used to work in the defence industry. Kim, thank you so much for your time. How significant is this news that you broke? Uh, I think it's extremely significant. It clearly completely undercuts the government's narrative that you outlined. I mean, David Fawcett is a very senior member of the opposition. As you say, he has a distinguished military career and he assured me, um, in fact, we spoke again just uh, a little earlier today, that the information about Ukraine's interest in the helicopters was indeed passed on to the government. Um, and I'm sorry to correct you in terms of calendars, it, it wasn't one month before uh, the official request went in. It was two months before. So you really have to wonder what uh -huh. on earth the government was doing. Yeah, what on earth the government was doing uh, all of that time. But I'll go even further. Even if Senator Fawcett hadn't passed on the information, why couldn't the government themselves have made the decision on the 28th of September, when apparently Richard Miles took the decision to decommission and scrapped the helicopters. I mean, everyone's heard of Ukraine. Uh, are, are we trying to help them or not? So you're so, so here is the thing. The government says, oh, three month delay since we made the decision to, to you know, to start disassembling them, uh, maybe start burying them. And in those three months, oh, it just got too hard. In fact, it only been one month after that decision that they were contacted. Now, surely then, there must be some Taipans that could have been sent without much trouble at all. I mean, Senator Fawcett thinks there still are some. Is he right? Uh, I believe he is, that I also have um, independent sources, and they believe that even though many of the Taipans have been disassembled, it, it's not uniform in the level of disintegration that's occurred, and so there's a consensus that between 12 and 20 of them could return to flying condition. Now, I'll predict the government seems to be so desperate for reasons that aren't clear that no one is ever going to use these helicopters. I suspect that their next excuse will be something like, well, it's more complex because things have to be certified and there are airworthy, airworthiness regulations. And what we have to keep in mind is th the Ukrainians don't care about that. They're so desperate to get these helicopters to save dozens, maybe hundreds of lives, mainly of young people, every week. They have said, we'll look after that. Please just get the helicopters to us. 
I simply don't understand that. The only thing that I can assume that may be the factor here, this government has gutted the army and, and the, the military generally in its defence review. There's so much money going to subs and a few other things that the, uh, the army can't, cannot afford to let these helicopters uh, go if it has to pay a dollar for the process. Is that what the issue is, that the army just doesn't have a dollar and the government won't make good that money? I think that that's part of it. The situation with the Taipans has always been a little bit complex because uh, even though they're quite safe helicopters, they've picked up a reputation in Australia for unreliability and also they are very expensive to maintain. There's no doubt about that. And yes, army certainly are cash strapped. But when you think about it for a moment, even the cost of pulling them apart, which is not an easy exercise, they're big, complex machines with a lot of electronics, a lot of cabling, a lot of wiring. If you take into account the cost of doing that, for all we know, it would have been cheap, cheaper to ship them to Ukraine in the first place. Kim Bergman, this is just a, such a scandal. We are letting in the lurch a country we pledged to help defend against naked aggression, against an alliance of tyrants, including Russia and China and, and North Korea and, and Iran, just for sheer pig-headedness. No one can understand this decision. Thank you so much for bringing this to light, the uh, deceit there. I appreciate that. I, I, I just stack it.